Well, good morning, and welcome to our study in the book of Exodus. Today we come to chapter 30, and in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the, the table of incense, we're going to be looking at the atonement money, we're going to be looking at the bronze laver, or the wash basin, and we're going to look at the incense itself. Now, as you've already guessed, my voice is, is not working really well, so I'm going to ask you to follow along in your scriptures as well as we read. Let's begin. Make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be a square, a cubit long and a cubit wide. So that's 18 inches square on the top. And two cubits high, so three feet high. It's horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold. And make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Now that would speak of the permanence or lasting a long time. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant law. Before the atonement cover, that is over the tablets of this covenant law where I will meet with you. And so God is saying, I want you to put this right in front of the curtain. The curtain that separates the Holy of Holies, table of incense. I want you to put it right in front of the curtain that separates the Holy of Holies from the outer court because it's in that holy place that I will meet with you. And the incense was to provide a sweet smelling offering to the Lord. And so here it says that Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. Okay, very specific there. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight so that incense will burn regularly before the Lord for generations to come. So you catch that. This was to be a perpetual thing. He was to do this for the generations to come. It was to be an ordinance for them. But do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering. Uh, do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atonement sin offering. For generations to come, it is most holy to the Lord. Now we've already talked about the sin offering that was to be made. <clears throat> and Aaron was to take some of that blood and put it on the horns of this table of incense. And he says, it is most holy. This was important to God. It's important. What is an incense that we have today? There's our praise comes before him. Our lives as a sweet smelling aroma to him. So that was the table of incense. And then we come to the atonement money. This is interesting. Then the Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted. Now, some commentators actually call this the ransom for the soul. The atonement money is called the ransom for the soul, and we'll see why. He says, then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. Now that's the, the weight of measurements that they had at the time. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over, those 20 years old or more, are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half shekel, 
and the poor are not to give less when you make the offering to the Lord to atone for your lives. Receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making atonement for your lives. Now, what was wrong with taking a census? Well, a census actually denoted ownership. And there's other times when uh, the Israelite kings would number the people and it aroused God's anger. Because if a census denoted ownership, that would, in a sense, displace God's ownership of the people. He wanted nothing to take that place. So they would pay. They would pay as a ransom, two reasons. One was that God would not visit them with a plague. And two, because it was a very practical way of meeting the needs of the tabernacle. Now, it appears that only those who were 20 years old or older would pay this tribute. Tradition tells us that uh, women did not pay it, that the minors, those who were under 20 years of age, would not pay it, or the old men, or the Levites. Now remember, the Levites did not own property. They were in charge of the upkeep of the tabernacle. That was their lot. They were not to tend fields. They were not to raise livestock. They were to be looked after by the Israelites. And so this is a way that God had to bring that money in. Now, this would be like what we would sort of call uh, a tithe or an offering. And in the book of Malachi, it states that, that if we honor the Lord with the first fruits of our labor, our, our tithe, that he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Time and time again, people have found that when they give God first, he seems to make the rest last longer. I've heard many, many stories over the years of how this worked. Because when we honor God, He honors us. See, the Israelites had to pay a ransom for their soul. In the New Testament, that ransom has been paid for your soul and mine through Jesus Christ. The scripture says He gave His life a ransom. He paid the price. He paid the penalty for the atonement. And that's what we have to rejoice in today. Well then, we come to what's called the bronze laver. And that's just a way of saying the wash basin. It was a big one, but it was a wash basin. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Now, bronze was very, very durable. And so this was going to be able to take a lot of use. And he says, place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Again, this is very serious stuff to God. And he wants us to come before him today clean. But the good news is, it's his Holy Spirit that washes us. The Bible says with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. We read that in Titus. He says also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for generations to come. Now, this bronze labor, where did they get the bronze? Well, in Exodus chapter 38, which we 
Lord willing, we come to in a few weeks. It says in verse 8 that uh, this, this bronze basin or laver was made from the mirrors of the women who served outside the tabernacle. So as everyone was giving an offering, this was one of the offerings that the women gave of their, their mirrors. And they were the ones who served outside the tabernacle. And so after the bronze labor, he talks about the holy anointing oil. Then the Lord said to Moses, <laughs> you see, each one of these is prefaced by the Lord speaking to Moses. Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hin of olive oil. Now a hin was about 5.7 liters, so it's about a gallon and a half of oil. And these spices were to be mixed into the oil to make it the holy anointing oil. And uh, make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the covenant law, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all of its utensils, and the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them so that they will be most holy, and whoever touches them will be holy. Now you see, they needed quite a bit of it, because there was a lot that needed to be anointed with that. Now, many people think that the Holy Spirit is a symbol of the anointing oil. And on the day of Pentecost, when he anointed or set each one of them on fire, as we read in the book of Acts, there was an anointing that came with them, and we saw the results immediately. Big, brash Peter suddenly became filled with wisdom, and the Spirit of God began speaking through him to the people. And he was quoting scripture from Joel chapter 2, and he was confronting all of those and preaching a sermon where thousands of people got saved. See, the anointing makes a difference. In the Old Testament here, God says, you make this oil just right. You do it the way I tell you so that everything you use will be holy. And those who use it will be holy as well. It says, anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate or separate them, call them out, so that they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred, and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on anyone other than a priest must be cut off from their people. Okay. God wasn't fooling around. He says this oil is to be made this way for this purpose. And he talks to us the same way too. We approach him on his terms. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to heaven. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus. Many people think all I have to do is live a good life. Or they figure if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, then you'll get to heaven. But it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. 
That's the same scripture in Titus chapter 3 that we talked about. But it's the renewing of the Holy Spirit, the washing of regeneration. So we come to God on his terms. And there is that anointing today. It's the Holy Spirit. He abides within you and me. Well, the last instruction was had to do with the incense itself. The Lord said to Moses, Take fragrant spices, gum resin, ancha, and galabum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. Now, when he's saying that, it, we would probably say it uh, the way a pharmacist would mix his chemicals today. And some of these scriptures say the, the, the work of an apothecary or a pharmacist. So they were to be very precise in the way they did it. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. And you say, well, well, why salt? Well, salt would have two uh, properties that would be beneficial here. One, it would help it to burn with the, the, the calcium in it. And second, it would preserve it because salt is a preserver as well. It says, grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the Ark of the Covenant Law in the Tent of Meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. In other words, pay attention to it. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. In other words, don't try to copy it for your only own use. This is for the Lord. It says, whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their people. Now, what does cut off mean? Well, a phrase that we would probably use and understand today is they would be excommunicated or they would be disfellowshipped. They would no longer be able to participate in all the privileges of the Israelites. And so God says, you do it this way and only this way. Well, thank you for joining with us today. Pray with me. Dear Father, thank you so much for your word. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to make it true to our hearts. Lord, thank you that you are very precise in what you say. And we ask, Lord, that each one listening would approach you on your terms. But Lord, thank you that when we approach you, you hear us and you answer our prayers. Be with your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lord willing, next week we'll be looking at uh, chapter 31 of the book of Exodus. And it's going to talk about some of the workers that God will anoint with the spirit of wisdom. So until that time, may God richly bless you.